Masha, that was beautiful. Thank you so much. And um, we have Sister Masuma with us. Um, Salam alaikum, Sister. Inshallah, you're well. Alhamdulillah, thank you. Um, so we have another question. Mm -hmm. um, and um, we've written in, I feel I have sinned so much in my life that this has had a great impact on my depression. Do you have any advice on what I could possibly do, do during this time? Um, and obviously we, we do emphasize on one of the nights of Hazrat Hur and his repentance. And I think this kind of ties quite nicely in with that. And what would you say to somebody that feels that sort of? I think um, it's again, this whole concept of feeling hopelessness. I, I think that that in itself is a sin. We need to have a, you know, a balance between um, the fear of sinning and the hope of being forgiving, uh, being forgiven. Um, and I think we can't, you know, go from one extreme to the other. Uh, it, it's funny how shaitan works. What he does is when you're about to sin, he makes you think about God's forgiveness. Oh, God's all forgiving and don't worry about mm -hmm. it. And then when you've actually done the sin, then he says, oh, you know, you're so bad and God's never going to forgive you. And, you know, and he makes you sort of fear God so much, where it should be the other way around. Yeah. It's like when you're about to sin, you should be fearing God and thinking, I can't do this. And when, you know, if you have sinned, then you should be, you know, asking for God's forgiveness yeah. because he is all forgiving. And I think as long as the forgiveness is, you know, uh, sought in a sincere way um, and the whole concept of Toba is, is put into motion where you're not actually just saying sorry, but actually, first of all, actually feeling remorse for what you've done, uh, you know, regret, regretting what you've done, asking for forgiveness, um, righting the wrong that you may have done, ensuring that you've put into place things that will stop you from doing that wrong again. So, you know, is it a place that you go to where, which pulls you towards that sin? Is it people that you know that pull you towards that sin? You know, what is it that's making you do that sin? And actually reflecting on that so that you can actually then put into place things which will stop you from doing that sin again. I think that's really, really important. So it's not just, oh, I'm sorry, let's move on. Yeah. Yeah, it, it ha I have to have actually felt that, you know, because sadness and I remorse. suppose it's knowing, as, a, as although we can never know Allah, but who are you sinning against? If yeah. you actually had that concept and if we had that in our minds, we would... Maybe perhaps, like you said, put that stop in before we committed something. Yeah. That who am I going to be showing my arrogance to? That I I'm sinning, you know. But it's it's yeah. or, you know it's such a deviant act for us. And to I do, think I think it? like when when people talk about fearing Allah, to me it's the fear of letting Him down, yeah. rather than fearing Him. It's it's about sort of He's given me so much. How could I? You yeah. know, how can I do that? Like you're saying that concept of you know, who he is and what he's done for me. And yeah. it's like, how can I? It's, it's that concept of, it's the same sort of principle that we have with our parents. It's like, we don't want to disappoint yeah. them because they've done so much for us. So it's the same sort of concept. It's like, I don't want to disappoint him. I want to live up to the potential that he's given me. Yeah. And that stops you from then going down that route. Yeah. No, I think also that's um, it's a beautiful point. And it's, it, it just reminded me of, um, so for instance, as parents, that we keep showing our mercy, even when our child is rude, or yeah. comes back and says something, oh, I'm not going to do this, and um, we, we just overlook it. And you think, Allah is so seven, much more merciful. It's says 70 times more yeah. he loves you than your mother. So, and, yeah. and they won't, and, and Allah will not give us, because we're certainly not deserving of his yeah. blessings, but because of his mercy. And um, But in terms of sort of forgiveness, do you think, um, how, how, what were the lessons that, for, for instance, has a Thor? I mean, it's such yeah, a... So again, if you look at the way he did it, it's, yeah. it's beautiful. You know, it's like he didn't just say, OK, I made a mistake, let's move on. Yeah. So first of all, that, con you know, like actually thinking it through, reflecting on what he'd done. I mean, you think about it, it's like, you know, he was the one who, you know, stopped Imam yes. um, from going to Kufa. He's the one who led Imam to Karbala and made him, you know, stop yeah. there and camp there. So it's, you know, it's due to him that the whole thing yeah. initiated initially. Uh, when he was doing it, he never thought it would actually end up in a battle. He, he thought it would be resolved somehow or other. And when he realized that it was going to end up in, in a battle and that you know the, the enemy wanted the blood of Imam Hussain al Islam, um, that's when he sort of stepped back and thought, hang on a minute, this isn't what I signed up for. Th this yeah. isn't, you know? And then to actually, you know, I mean, being the commander, again, he had that status, yeah. he had everything going for him. Yeah. Um, and, you know, he wasn't scared, he, you know, he, he was a warrior. And then to actually sort of take that moment out to self-reflect and think, what is it I'm, that I'm doing? And all the way through, if you look at his meetings with Imam Hussain al-Islam, he 
knew the status of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. He knew the status of Bibi Fatima alayhi salam because again, yeah. you know, he says, if your mother wasn't Bibi exactly. Fatima, I would not, you know, I would say something as well. So but I think before he says that, it's the I, what I love about that is the way that the Imam knew what would yes. press his button yeah. and you know get that real heart out of you yeah. that is inside that was and make him realize that yeah. you know I know all of these things. Exactly. And again, it's I, I think that that's really important that. Alhamdulillah, you know, if, if I already know yeah. the status of my imam, I know the status of these holy personalities, the Ahlul Bayt and so forth, then there is hope for me. And, yeah. and that's why there was hope for her, you know. And the fact that he spent that time self-reflecting, thinking about it, you know, he was walking up and down and when someone asked him, he said, I feel like I'm between heaven yeah. and hell. And it was, it was literally that. If he continued in the path he was going to go to, you know, he was going towards, mm. he was going to go towards hell. Mm. He had to make a huge U-turn and, and, you know, do something about what he'd done. And when he realized, you know, what he'd done was wrong, immediately he took action to right the wrong. Yeah. So, you know, actually not only asking Allah's forgiveness, but asking the, you know, the forgiveness of Imam Hussein. And spiritually, that, that is a massive jihad within us, isn't it? So it's oh. the bigger jihad, is the one inside. I mean, he, he was, a, as you said, the commander had the physical strength, the physical power, the yeah. physical personnel. But when it came to it, the biggest strength and test for him was his own self. That yeah. what do I do? Do I turn around? And, and that, that spiritual strength that came out, he made the right decision. Yeah. Um, and so obviously, like you said, that he's then going back to Imam Hussein. And, yeah, and asking for his forgiveness because he'd wronged him. Mm. Asking for Bibi Zainab Islam's forgiveness again because he'd wronged her as well. So, you know, he's actually writing the wrong that he's done. And then you see that he wants to you know, actually compensate for the wrong that he's done. And he says, I want to be the first one that goes out to the battle. I want to be the one who gives up my life first. And again, so it's not, oh, sorry, let's, you know, yeah. it's, it's like I, I, you know, I give the example of, you know, if I've sat here and I've cleaned up my house and my husband comes home and he's drinking his coffee and he spills it and he says, oh, sorry, and then he gets up and walks off. It's like, where's the sincerity in that? Sorry, yeah. if you're sorry, you would clean it up. Again, you know, you see the sincerity in, in, in who's, for, you know, asking for forgiveness. He's the first one to actually go out, and and the way he talks to to, to the you know to the army that he was the commander of, yeah. it's like, you know, trying to get them to realize what they're doing is wrong was amazing. It you know it, it, again it shows that spiritual power that came from within. Yeah. So do you think so? You was, we were saying in um, a couple of series ago, um, of shows ago that. Um, it's the 40 day period and it's when we take um, an op we can take an opportunity to change habits um, so do you think the first of you know Muharram to is a good opportunity to really write down or contemplate on what we are perhaps sinning so this person is saying I've sin sinned a lot in, in my life I don't know if they're still sinning or they haven't obviously explained that and that and has that caused the depression? Or maybe the depression is because of the guilt. I don't know. Mm. Obviously, we don't know about the situation. But assuming that um, it's that hopelessness is there and you think, oh, I'm, you know, I'm just doomed. And I think even in that, there's a beauty, isn't there? That they are feeling that low in themselves. Allah is obviously clearly trying to wake them up and yeah. say, it's okay, I'm there for you. Yeah. You've got this opportunity to come and repent. In these but then realizing months. that Allah doesn't abandon you. No. So, you know, the, if you look at Imam Sajjad al um you know, um, whispered um, duas of, um, for the repenter. Yeah. And he talks about the door of Tawbah being open. And he says, Ya Allah, what excuse do, you know, does anyone have not to walk through that door? Yeah. It's not even that you have to find the key or knock on the door, it's open. It's open. You just have to walk through it. Yeah. So it's again, you know, when I feel that low, when I feel that depression, you know, I feel that sadness because of the sins that I've committed, that's great. But then let's do something about it. Yeah. Don't just you yeah, know, just dwelling, yeah, yeah. dwelling on that self, you know, and, and sort of wallowing in my own self-pity yeah. because that's how shaitan gets to you. So, yes, once I feel that, that, that's the remorse, but then I need to then take it to the next step and actually sort of, you know, do this thick far, right the wrong that I've done and actually think about, okay, so like you're saying, maybe write down the sins that I've committed. You know, one of the things that is very disliked by God is actually to share your sins with others. Yeah. So, you know, it, it, God doesn't want you to tell others what sins you've committed because, again, he doesn't want he's you to... He's covering you. Isn't yeah, it? he's protecting mm. you. He doesn't want, you know, other people to think badly of you. Yeah. And, he, and he, you know, he actually covers your sins. So, again, talking to Allah, telling him what sins you've committed and asking for his forgiveness and then righting the wrong. And, and maybe and it's not like of, he doesn't know. Obviously, he yeah. knows better than us. We forget our sins, but, um, you know, obviously everything's in his knowledge. But it's, again, it's more for ourselves, isn't it? That, you know, acknowledge what we've done yeah. and say... And, and that's why it's so important to, I think, self-reflect every night, 
so that you actually don't forget the sins that you've committed. Because mm -hmm. again, if you commit sin upon sin upon sin, then what you do is actually, you know, close yourself off to the guidance of Allah. It's like when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about, you know, um, the fact that he um, puts a seal on your hearts, yeah. you know, and, and on, their, on, their, on their eyes and on their yeah. ears. It's, it, you know, it's not that he's putting it, it's the system that he's put into place. So if you continuously sin, then there will be veils and seals that are placed. And although the guidance is there, you, will, you, you won't see it. You won't no. see it. You won't get anything from it. No. So it's really important to self-reflect every night before we go to bed um, to think about what is it that I you know, did which I need to sort of ask for forgiveness for. And what is it good that I did mm -hmm. that I need to sort of thank Allah for you know, being able to fulfill that goodness in my life today. Mm. Absolutely. And I think, um, you know, these are, these are, like we were saying before, that these are opportunities for us to, you know, to, in the month of Muharram. And, and while we look at Hur as an example, that Hur can be us, that yeah. inside of us, that jihad, that we turn our soul around and say, actually, I'm not going to do this sin anymore. I am going to make a difference. And, and when that temptation is there to, to remember the, that promise he made and say, no, I'm not repeating. I'm not going back down that path where Allah will be, you know, like you said, you're disappointed in yourself. That you've, you've let such a gracious Lord um, down that, you know, he's created us with so much. So it's really putting our own boundaries, isn't it? And not to yeah. keep expanding and because we will then become immune to that sin and it will become normal. And, um, and sometimes I, 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 you know, in conversations you hear people saying, yeah, it's okay, that's just music, it's okay. And you think, mm -hmm. how have we got from sort of not listening to it, then it's okay, that's okay. And we will only just get worse, won't yeah. we? And it's, and it's really to put your restraints on your own soul. Yeah, and sometimes I think, you know, again, God knows that we need help. And so, again, he gives us these amazing holy personalities to sort of connect to and, and sort of ask for their help as well. So, it, you know, it, it's beautiful the way, you know, again, if you look at how the year is set, it's beautiful. You know, you start mm -hmm. off with Muharram, where you connect to human beings. So I can relate to these holy yeah. personalities. I can, I can, you know, see them as role models and try to connect to them. And then you get um, my Ramzan, where Allah is saying to you, okay, now you can see what you can achieve. Because look at what these holy personalities achieve. Now work on your own self. Yeah. So in my Ramzan, you're working on your own soul and connecting to Allah. And then when you've done that, then he gives you a hajj where he says, now you come to me yeah. and I will make you rise, you know, to wondrous yeah. places. So it's, it's beautiful it's how it's, journey, yeah, it? it's, the journey, it's, it's yeah. amazing. And so if we, imp if we impl implemented that, as you're saying so beautifully, that every year then inshallah we can only raise and get yeah. better. Um, but I think that's all we've got time for today. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Um, it's been another lightning. Um, and inshallah this person can make those changes that inshallah. they hope to make. And we all have things to improve on. So inshallah sure. we can all dig out that hole inside of us and inshallah. Inshallah make the best improvements. Um, next up, we have Mini Hussainis. 